<laughs> yeah, I know. Free of charge, free sir. Yeah, absolutely now? free. Do you want to, like, can you tell me what it's an like, what it's about? Yes, we will do that fantastically well for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, why are you doing that? Would you mind if I just film that while you're asking uh, questions? That's okay. Yeah, is that right? yeah. He looks he handsome he enough. He's all right. He's okay. He's okay. No, there's nothing to freak out <laughs> about. I'm Shabir. What is your name? In America, so like, yeah. No, I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering. Just a natural. <laughs> My parents just thought it sounded cool. So. <laughs> Actually, it probably does. Who was that uh, famous actor who took on the role of Jesus? Uh, it... yeah, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. That's who it was. Actually, uh, uh, when did you come to the UK? Um, I'm studying abroad actually. I'm with a class. You are uh, studying here? Yeah. In the UK? Yeah, um, right. we're here with the honors program. So we're All right. staying okay. here and we're, we're here for about another week and then we're heading back to the States. Right, okay, excellent. Yeah. Well, basically the, the Quran, uh, from the perspective of the Quran, is just, uh, we have, according to history, many people who are what we call prophets of God, yeah? Are you of a Christian background? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. excellent. So you are familiar with Jesus Christ, right, right. yeah? Uh, the, the Quran merely makes the claim that it is the final revelation, which, as far as the Quran is concerned, it constitutes all the teachings that had come to the prior prophets. But in addition to that, it provides total guidance for humanity while they sojourn on earth. And that is all the Quran has. It has all the prescriptions for human interaction to be at a level where it is as effective as is possible. So that you have, as you know, when you came to the UK, you needed a visa, I presume, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, likewise, when we go to the United States. So there are rules, regulations, laws, etc. And uh, the guidance of the Creator basically takes into consideration every human aspect the ones that we know through our study and the ones that we don't as yet know also. So in total, that is what constitutes the Quran. So it goes through history, it goes through aspects of what we would consider today natural phenomena. It talks about what we call scientific elements. And so it, it covers a broad range of subject matter. But in essence, it is a message from the Creator informing us of the existence of a creator primarily and most importantly it also gives us all the information that we require to be able to live our lives as effectively and peacefully as is possible yeah okay, that's cool. what it constitutes yeah would you like a present sir <laughs> i would love a crown yeah absolutely <laughs> there you are although this one this one is just a, a translation which right i'm sure you will be able to yeah. but what if are some you, different, do you know like some differences between this and the Bible? Uh, well, no, I, I, in, in terms of the message itself, I would not suggest that there is. That right. I, would, I, would, I would though point out a brief uh, distinction between what we consider to be the Bible and what we are told as the revelations that came to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and Moses, yeah, the primary right. prophets, yeah. Uh, what came to uh, Moses in the Quran is considered to be the Torah, which we are familiar with. And as far as Jesus Christ is concerned, it is the Injil, or what we consider to be the good news. Right. Yeah. Uh, the Bible as it is constituted right now actually is talking about books that were collect collected together and made into what is considered to be the Bible today. Yeah. So you have got from Genesis to Malachi in the Old Testament, from Matthew to Revelation in the New Testament. Yeah. Now those, from the Islamic perspective or from the Quranic perspective, they talk about Revelation that came to the previous prophets, but I would not strictly consider it to be Matthew, Mark, Luke and John right. as right. the gospel, uh -huh. yeah, or the writings of Paul thereafter. Right. Yeah. So yes, we acknowledge the fact that a revelation had come to Jesus Christ, it was the Injil. A revelation had come to Moses, which was the Torah. That is accepted. But 
the details we will probably defer it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So like yeah, you don't believe Jesus is the son of God, but you. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, the way I look at it uh, uh, is. Like anything else, what are, what are you majoring in right now? I'm majoring in music composition. Actually. Mu brilliant and, music. Yeah, and I might be minoring actually in Islamic studies. Excellent, so even even better. <laughs> yeah, but in the major, you know, in the in musical terminology, when you use the word cadences, what does that mean? It's like when you end a phrase. Like right. Excellent. When you end a phrase. All right. If you consider the way we approach life, yeah, we will find that we almost inevitably base it on the facts that we are aware of. Yeah, but those facts were, as a, were only arrived at through evidence and its interpretation. Yeah, now when somebody tells me you don't believe in Jesus being the Son of God, what I usually kindly say is that it's not a question of belief because that, that should only come after you have assessed the evidence for its merits or demerits, whichever it may be. Now, oftentimes I will tell my Christian friends. You talk about the Son of God, Jesus Christ, but do you mean it in a specific way? Or are you saying generally a Son of God? Which one would it be? Uh, I think specifically. You are absolutely right. According to John 3.16, you are told that this particular guy came a special son. Yeah, He was begotten of God, not made. Now that makes a special sort of son. However, if you look at all the details in the Bible, you will he isn't anything special and he himself says it yeah as an example and i'm just going to quote for evidential purposes sure. yeah? yeah in the gospel of john chapter 5 verse 30 he says according to the gospel i can of my own self do nothing as i hear i judge and my judgment is just not because i seek my will but the will of he that sent me what is he trying to say I think he's trying to put himself subject to his father, which is like because he's trying to set an example for us here on earth. Uh -huh. So that's that's what I've always thought is that he's True. he's setting an example that because he had the Holy Spirit, which yeah. is also from God. So he's uh -huh. kind of modeling for us how yeah like how we're supposed to acknowledge God. Yeah, yeah which is which is fine. However. If you look at the evidence itself, it seems to give a different picture. That is where one has to assess it carefully. For example, the Bible talks about people and it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Now, it is in the plural. It's not talking about a particular single one. Now, if you look at Jesus' statements, for example, when he made that very famous statement, I and my father are one, in John chapter 10, verse 30, usually you'd equate, yeah? Right. He's saying, I and my father are one. And one in what? In what are they one? It's a question that ought to be asked. Now, the evidence itself doesn't make any claim for what. But what he does do is he explains what he means. Because when he made that statement, they had accused him of committing blasphemy. Yeah. Now the question I would ask is that if he was a special son of God and he had an association with the Creator, then when they made the charge to him, he would have explicitly acknowledged it. What do you think? Uh, when they like when they made the charge when they charged him with uh, blasphemy, and right. he he he, he, sh he should have acknowledged he was that he was the son of God. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't think he did at that point. He didn't. But he did in other points. I think he yeah. he was very strategic about when he revealed that or said yeah. that explicitly, because he did reveal it to the Samaritan woman at the well. Uh huh. He, Off the top of your head, what did he say? Uh, he said, "I am he," where she was uh, she was talking about the Messiah. And the yeah, absolutely, you're right. But what if I ask you? According to the Old Testament, when it uses the word Messiah, did it mean something special? Uh, well, according to the Jewish people, the, it, it was. I mean, and I think in Isaiah, when it's talking about how there would be a, a son to come, absolutely, yeah, the sins and iniquities of the world. Yeah, then true. I think that Jews took it to to mean what it said, which was that absolutely. There would be. But isn't it odd that the majority of the Jews never accepted him? Right, it is. Why? Um, I don't know. I think maybe it's just because they weren't they weren't called. Because I think that I think that the people I think God calls certain people. Ah, I see what you mean. Yeah, called, yeah. Then, yeah. 
but um, yeah. It's a strange one. Yeah. Never yeah. considered. <laughs> yeah. But you are absolutely right. But if you think about it, what happens here is that when Jesus Christ made a statement, he always made it very clear, and this is in the Gospel of Matthew 5, 17. He made it very clear that I have not come to change any law or add to it. Right. When he made that claim, under whose law was he acting? Um, it would be the Mosaic law. Yeah, right. right. He was talking about and in Mosaic law, the rules were very definitive about who made any claims in association with the Creator. Now, if he is making the claim that he had obeyed, and there's no way in the Bible or in the Gospels where he is charged of going against what, G, what uh, the Mosaic law stated, because he himself made that explicit acknowledgement that I have not come to change one jot or one tittle until all are fulfilled. Yeah. So if he adopted the Mosaic law, do you think as a prophet of God or as the Messiah, he would go against the very law that he says he had adopted? No, and I don't believe he did. Okay, so when he made this explicit Son of God claim, was he going against it or not? No, because he was the Son of God. No, no, that's true. Yeah. But if you look at the Mosaic law, is there a concept of a close Son of God or is that blasphemy? Um, I believe in the Old Testament there are hints of that there are more than one. Give uh, me an example. As in like three and one. Oh, three right, three I three. see. The, the Trinity. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so like, if you look at the Tower of Babel, yes. um, where it's talking about let us go down. Yeah. Um, also, um, when it talks about the when Holy he created uh, when he created right. the male and female. Right. He says, yeah, let, let us, us make, make them in their yeah right. image. And, yeah. True. And then the, um, and but have you have Samuel, you ever where yeah it was like Saul is the king and then the Holy Spirit would come upon him yes and, yes but yes it wouldn't dwell in even when they came to Abraham the angels yeah right. no you're you're absolutely right the hints are there the question is taking the hint and making it into a fact the evidence for that has to be assessed mm -hmm. yeah right. so for example if I were to tell you the English translation talks about let us make man yeah Right. Now, you rightly pointed out that this was from the Jewish writings. Which Jew considered that to be a, an instance where there is a hint of more than one creator? Which Jew? Like the, the, for writing? example, in Genesis 129, where it says, let us make man in our image. Let us make man. Mm -hmm. Now, when, he used the, when the word us is used, in Jewish idiom, did it mean more than one? I don't, I don't pretend to know all the answers. No, it, <laughs> plural of respect. no it, sorry? it's a plural of respect. Correct. That's a good question because they existed for 3,000 years. These words existed for two or 3,000 years before yeah. Jesus. Yes, so exactly. Now, absolutely. Now, the amazing thing is that every Jew will tell you actually it was only used as a plural of respect and honor. Yeah. So when the word was translated as we, okay, it only took on significance when the later writings suggested something other than that. For example, according to the historical records, in 325 AD and approximately 320 years after Jesus Christ, the Council of Nicaea sat. Okay. This is where a decision was made as to what we are going to consider Jesus to be, yes? There were two proponents to it, right. okay? Yeah, I've heard of it. You, you've heard of it, yeah. yeah? Athanasius made this claim that Jesus Christ was more than just a human being, okay? Whereas Arius, a Christian, made the claim that he was only a prophet, nothing more. Now, unfortunately, when the decision was made there, the decision went in favor of Athanasius, where he claimed this idea of what we call the Trinitas, yeah, the Trinity. However, when Athanasius was dying, he himself made the admission that no matter how much I think of it, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> right. He made the claim himself, yeah. yeah? But now, once that, those writings took hold, it then became a matter of repeat of history, yeah? yeah? Until we came today to where we have got elements which suggest there was the Trinity. But I'll tell you something. In, uh, the, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, the, the translation read, 
There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Right. Yeah? Now, unfortunately, that very same verse has been deleted from the Bible right now. It's not there anymore. In fact, it has been replaced with the blood, the water, and something else. Uh, 1 5, John 1 5. One, John no, chapter 5, verse 7. Uh, 1 John 5 7. Now, you can actually check it. Yeah? The problem here is that according to the translators, they are saying that in the most ancient manuscripts, this was not in there so they had to remove it unfortunately like they did in 1953 they had a whoops in 1953 they had a revision of the bible in which the the gospel the gospels were actually addressed and certain actual verses were removed completely yeah uh, and you wonder okay one is fine but where you have got whole chapters in the gospel of john were removed okay the public pressure was so great that in 1973 they re-revised it and inserted it back in. Now, two very important issues that are that were talked about, oh yeah, were the resurrection and uh, of uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, in the two gospels, it used to be there, but it isn't. Then it was put back in, and there was a footnote that these two are not to be found in the most ancient manuscripts. Uh, the resurrection post-resurrection you know when he ascends, oh, when he ascends. yeah okay. that is not there so you find yeah exactly you will uh, find it, yeah by, by all means check it yeah sure. the problem is that if the the basis for the trinity was on 1 john 5 7 and that has been removed then one needs to reconsider the whole idea of these you know elements that you right. thought about as as though they were pointing towards the yeah. trinity now when jesus christ said I and my father are one in John 10 30 they wanted to stone him yeah he says to them why are you wanting to stone me is it because I do good they said no not because of what you do that is good but because you are committing blasphemy after having been a man you make yourself a God now part of the Trinity is that not part of the Godhead isn't that the claim they are making to him they are aren't they now he doesn't say well actually yes i am either we accuse him god forbid of lying which he would not do as a prophet of god or he's telling the truth i would suggest he's telling the truth what does he say he says is it not written in your law i said you are gods what is he on about <laughs> well actually you find it that it is in psalm 82 that is what he says yeah he is making a claim that the creator used to call people to whom the message went as gods well if the creator is calling them god why do you find it a problem about me calling myself a son whom the father has sanctified and sent into the world now he's telling them i haven't committed any blasphemy what are you on about but the, the question the most important